is this why this consensus among scholars is that the Septuagint was a translation from Hebrew into Greek? This is getting back yeah. to the thing that you and Amon sure. had okay. the debate on Neil's channel about. So the reason, no, I don't think that I don't think it has anything to do with that. Okay. So the reasons why scholars think that the Septuagint, the Septuagint was translated from Hebrew texts is because when you investigate the two texts side by side, mm -hmm. the Hebrew next to the Greek you see things taking place within the Greek text that um, indicate there is, a, there is a Hebrew syntactical feature that um, they are grappling with, that they're dealing with. Like they're not, so Greek and Hebrew are not related, like they're, they're distantly related languages, right? Greek is Indo-European. Hebrew is Northwest Semitic. Okay. The languages function differently. So, you know, there are there are clues within the Greek text, and it's like any translation, right? You mm -hmm. you encounter uh, colloquialisms or idioms or turns of phrase in one language that don't translate well into another language. Yes. And when someone encounters a feature like that of the text, not quite knowing what to do with it, they'll develop various strategies. And there are there are things that we can actually point to in the Greek text where we see that happening. Um, I mean, I know you, I know you talked to to uh, uh, Dan McClellan about yeah. a, about a few of these, right? He re, he mentioned the. Uh, I just don't understand how we have this. Septuagint, yeah. which is in Greek, yeah, and why they came up with, oh no, it's well, it's in Greek, but we're yeah. gonna just hypothesize that this was originally Hebrew. Well, but there's no evidence that it was. An there original is Hebrew. lots of evidence. Well, oh, there first is. of all, let's talk about the manuscripts. Okay, how many Septuagint manuscripts are there? I have no idea. There are. So we have we have Septuagint manuscripts. I don't know anything that, about any okay. of this stuff. I'm just coming in. So, like I told you, my my education on this whole topic right. is Amon and Neil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> so. Um, in terms of Septuagint manuscripts, uh, we have a whole bunch from like the, the third, fourth, fifth century AD. Okay. Okay. The farther back you go, you know, first century AD. Written in Greek. Written in Greek, okay. first century BC, second century BC, there's very few. Okay. We have tiny, tiny little fragments little bits and pieces. Okay. I think our oldest Septuagint manuscripts date to around the mid second century BCE. Okay. Just in the Dead Sea Scrolls, we literally have thousands and thousands of fragments, Hebrew fragments that are from the second century, first century BC. Now, one of the things that we also see in the Hebrew fragments from the Dead Sea Scrolls, as I mentioned before, you know, we have multiple copies of individual books of the Bible, you know, multiple copies of the book of Isaiah, multiple copies of the book of Daniel, Genesis, Exodus, what, all these different books um, in different versions. Mm -hmm. One of the things about the, the Septuagint that we have, which is, you know, uh, I, I believe that the Septuagint, this this Greek text of the Bible that we have, is mostly drawn from a particular manuscript called the Codex Sinaiticus, which dates to the fourth century BC or fourth century CE, fourth century AD. AD, right? So, but one th one of the things that you see when you compare that text to the Hebrew text is in a lot of places, it's pretty dramatically different. Mm -hmm. For example. The book of Jeremiah is the largest book by word count in Hebrew in the Old Testament. Uh, and the Septuagint version of it is shorter by, I think it's 15%. So it's a much shorter text and it's in a dramatically different order. It's clearly way different. Mm -hmm. There's other texts from the Bible that are like this. The book of Exodus is like this. The book of 
uh, first Samuel. So you're like saying, this. and I'm just trying yeah. to make sure I understand this correctly. You're saying that the Greek is using less words and the Hebrew is using more words. What I'm saying is that in certain places, it looks like if we, if we think that the let's, let's, for for the sake of this part of the discussion, let's say that there's a Hebrew original to the Greek. Okay. What what it looks like is that the Septuagint is using a different Hebrew text than the Hebrew text that we have preserved. So it's very different. Um, now, in the Dead Sea Scrolls, we have discovered Hebrew copies that look like the text of the Septuagint in terms of the differences compared to the Hebrew text that we have inherited. So I, I know this, this gets complicated, Yeah. but you're within the Dead Sea Scrolls, you've got different versions of the same text. They're not all exactly the same. So there's copies. Um, of... Yes, copies, and some of them really, really different. For example, hmm. as I was talking about the book of Jeremiah, in the Septuagint, their version, the Septuagint version, the Greek version, ends in Jeremiah chapter 44. Uh, in the Hebrew version, ends in chapter 52. So there's a whole bunch of extra material, right? And again, like I said, it's all rearranged. Uh, and, and yet we have a Hebrew copy uh, from the Dead Sea Scrolls, mm -hmm. so written in Hebrew, uh -huh. that also ends... In chapter 44. Looks just like this Greek Want text. Uh, no, I'm good. Music I'm okay. to stay awake. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. 30 minutes of sleep last night. <laughs> it's brutal. Um, that, that hurricane just, just knocked everything out of you. Okay. Out of everyone. So so that's on, I'm just saying on, on the one side of this, we have this manuscript question. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot from the period. Uh, we have actually a lot more copies of Hebrew uh, biblical manuscripts from an early period than we do these Greek Septuagint manuscripts. But uh, there's also uh, the language problems. And I I mean, we could talk a little bit about that if you wanted so to. So my understanding of the language yeah. <clears throat> is that the Greek is a much more deep and yes. complex language yes. than the Hebrew. That's true. And the Greek has like over a million unique words I don't, and Hebrew has like 6,000. I think that uh, the way you you make those, the the way that, that Amon comes up with those numbers. Is uh, that not true? It depends on how you count them. I, okay. I've never heard anyone but him say that there's a million. He's the only person I've heard suggest that. I, I think uh, it's probably more accurate to say closer to 250,000. It's I'm word forms and, and uh, it, Neil, can you can you corroborate this for yeah. us? There's there's 1.5 unique word forms, but that's, that's counting all of the uh, paradigms of verbs. Oh well, see, so I mean, you do the 1. same 5 thing. 1.5 million unique yeah. word forms. Right. But what does that are, mean? I mean, so one it, verb, for example, yeah. luo can be luo men, luo seen, luo luo thin. That so it be different versions of the word to in it. English. Well, I'll, I'll try and explain okay. this in English. Okay. okay. So okay. Like, we have, we have a verb, uh, run, right. Mm -hmm. Uh, a, a form of the verb, uh, using, uh, the subject and the object. Uh, if, if we're speaking about, um, you personally running to the store, you could say, I ran to the store. Yeah. I ran uh, is a verb form. You ran is another verb form. He ran is another verb form. Mm -hmm. In Greek, as well as in Hebrew, that form is represented by uh, a word that looks a little different each So time. different ways the yeah. same word is used. He's yeah. counting that as unique yes. word forms. So when so, you count, when you say there's 8,000 yep. unique words in Hebrew, are you doing the same thing? Uh, no. So I think he's probably only just counting the roots there. It's Lamata. It's 250,000. So 250,000. What'd you say? 250,000 Lamata, 1.5 unique word forms in Greek. That's the, that's the number of the up-to-date lexicons. Now, now, 
I think I think importantly, I'm happy to I'm happy to agree. Okay. That Greek is definitely a more developed language mm-hmm. in and in terms of in terms of some of the complexity. So my, and there's a lot more lot more literature. So to my untrained brain yeah. on linguistics and all this stuff, the yeah. tra- I don't know anything about translating. I've never yeah. translated anything in my life. Right. But the way my layman brain thinks about this is if I found a flying saucer in the desert Mm -hmm. and I am a, it came from some advanced civilization Mm -hmm. and I'm some primitive ape trying to figure out what it is and recreate it. I would create probably something closer to like a horse and buggy compared to that flying saucer. Yep. So if the Septuagint is this incredibly deep, sophisticated language with with many more words being used how are you coming up with something that is less advanced and less developed out of that um hmm how do i i mean how do i answer that question just cuz it's it's not that's not really how translators, people working with the ancient languages, think through these things. So, so sorry, so, I, I framed yeah. I framed that backwards. I think you what did. I'm saying. So I, I framed it backwards. So, yeah. so that's so the idea. So if it was originally Hebrew, it mm-hmm. was the horse and buggy, and they yep. came up with the flying saucer yeah. as the translation, mm-hmm. right? Because it was translated into Greek, which was the much yep. more complex language. Yeah, that makes sense. That's that's how it's that's how it's believed by yes. scholars. Yeah, and that's. That it's makes, universal to me. Too. That doesn't make sense. Like it's the way that that was the way it's described to me, and right. the way I understand it. And to me, it doesn't make sense. Well, I mean, you can translate anything into any other language, though, regardless of the complexity. I mean, we still do this all the time, mm-hmm. right? Like not all language. I, and this, I think, this depends on how you're measuring complexity too. Are we just counting numbers of words for different things? Uh, you know, complexity could could mean different things, I think. 